I'm Matt Marco. Welcome to Lion's Head in Cape Town, South Africa. Tonight we'll be taking a journey on the United's 16-hour journey all the way up to Newark, 7,815 miles. I'll be in Economy Plus by a window. Not that that matters. It's a nighttime flight. So stay tuned. Enjoy the ride. Let's get to the airport and see what this is all about. From time to time, you'll get old backlog footage of a journey and adventure I took. This particular one was in January of 2022. Welcome to Cape Town International Airport. Looks a little chaotic back there. I'm glad I got here well, well early, about four hours early. Gives me plenty of time to look around, show you the airport. Let's see what else is on the to-do list. But first, gotta go get rid of this bag. I don't feel like carrying it on the plane. Depending on where you come in, this is the arrivals hall. You gotta go upstairs for check-in. So I'm so early, it's not even on the board yet. I'm just wandering around and I randomly found United Counters. So if you're looking to kill time, upstairs above check-in, there's coffee shops, restaurants, even a kid's play area, even a mock-up of the airport. That's fun. Apparently it's a 1-200 scale model. Today's journey will be on a 787. The Dreamliner is the way to go. Should be a comfortable ride. The seven-year-old has a four-class cabin, Polaris Business, Premium Plus, Economy Plus, and Economy. Check the board for your check-in counter numbers. Thank you so much. Damn, one freaking hurdle. I got the dreaded 4S's for some reason. <sighs> Maybe all the flying around I've been doing lately. Who knows? Let's get through security. So the dreaded S's, basically what they mean is extra searching at the gate before boarding. Now that I'm through security, piece of cake. What the time consuming part now is passport control. I see it's backed up really good. While waiting, at least you had good views of the ramp and aircraft, especially this South African Air Force plane that came strolling by. This line was insanely long. At least they'd do their best to occupy your time with some artwork. I'm so close. 40 minutes later and I'm through. I have two and a half comfortable hours roughly to maybe enjoy this lounge. Give me a drink. Then maybe they have AC. <laughs> but let's go kick the feet up. I was beginning to wonder why the airport seems so empty. That's because everyone seems to have access to the lounge. And you just gotta be patient and find a seat. Luckily today was a good day. I was pleased to see a good drink station and a buffet spread. I really lucked out getting this corner spot. It's packed like you expected. Food smells and looks good. And then probably head to the gate a little over an hour before the departure because maybe I can get screened early. Depending on where you sit in this lounge, you have ramp views again. This Turkish Airlines pushing out. I was tracking my flight coming in and got lucky and got footage of it landing. Let's get closer to the gate and watch it pull in. Let me show you what else this airport has in store for those that don't have lounge life. Bookstores, electronics, duty free. And now that all the planes from earlier have left, it's much quieter. There's restaurants there at the end, currency exchange. Last but not least, a nice souvenir store. There's only a handful of places to eat and drink. Here's the real fancy lounges. And then also a second bid vest lounge. And walking to the end here, see a little baby Antonov. 
Also, good views of the airport landing, taking off. I stand corrected. That plane out there is an Aleutian 76 from Russia. An 11 year old cargo plane. Now that I've shown you the airport, wandered around, plane spotted. I was trying to go see if the gate's open. When I first took a glance at the gate, it was closed down until two hours prior. And then they had two tables set up, six stations total. Maybe they're checking everyone, well, there's more than just me. Okay, so the four S's, they swap your electronics, your hands, your feet, take your shoes off, check your waist. They search you pretty good, but they did confiscate the two bottles of water I thought I could have for the 16 hour flight. Just kind of dumb. But uh, he said it's the law in South Africa on long flights, which does make sense whenever the one's going to Europe. I don't see this going on. Finally, after waiting around, it's time to board. And a lot of you might be think I'm nuts and I'm excited to board the 16 hour flight. Well, hey, I'm sitting in Economy Plus. 31L right on the back of the wing with 38 other seats. Two being exit rows, 34 inches of pitch compared to regular economy's 31 inches and one extra inch of seat recline. I know that can be a big deal. A laugh to her. Fairly spacious, typical. Nothing fancy in economy. Getting back to the seat, you have the optional headrest, a neck pillow, and a blanket that United Airlines provides. Now the legroom was pretty solid, but that's because it's economy plus. Let's be the judge on a 16 hour flight. It's nice to see air vents on a jumbo jet. Usually you don't. Here's another helpful thing United does. A schedule of how the flight will go. Getting the final tasks done, and we're about to push. Cue that safety video. Right next to us was another super long haul, Delta's 16 and a half hour flight to Atlanta. As we make our way to the runway, let me tell you about United's long haul routes. As of now, it's basically a virtual tie for third because this route always switches over to Johannesburg to Dulles or Cape Town, Newark. This is the last bit of city lights you'll see until we land in Newark, because you go immediately out to sea. And just like that, the cabin lights were turned back on, the beverage cart up the aisle, and it was time to drink and eat. Here's somewhat of a tip. This food is definitely very hot, so warm your bread and butter on top. I went with the vegetarian pasta because I saw someone open the chicken dish and it didn't look that appealing. This was all right, a little bland, but it did the trick. To start this marathon off, Samaritan was my first movie on the rest of this 7,000 mile journey. As I was watching my second movie, they began to dim the lights to simulate sleep. I grew tired and slowly fell asleep. Many hours later. After getting several hours of sleep in an economy seat, I noticed we had just left the African coast. I got up and patiently waited for the lab to clear. I had to get up and stretch the legs, do some calf races, get the blood flowing. I've been sitting for at least nine, maybe nine hours now. You can obviously do this in the aisles too. I got back to my seat and started up another movie. With about 670 miles to go, we're in the home stretch. Then out of the darkness, the flight attendants came up with their drink cart, and the lights came on. They were about to serve us breakfast, and I think this meal was better than dinner. 
This to me felt like a very kind of English breakfast with eggs, beans, and a sausage, and fruit on the side. It seemed like next thing I know, I noticed that the window shade came back to normal, the laning lights kicked on, and we were making a hard bank to turn into Newark. Now, I thought this flight went pretty quick for me. Some people I noticed were dreading it, constantly getting up and down and moving, and even the babies were ready to get off the plane. It's only in the darkness of night you ever see Newark International Airport this quiet. I made my way up the business class aisle, dreaming of it one day. Take care. I survived. If you made it this far, hit that like button for me, subscribe if you're not already. See you in the next adventure.